Chapter 9, The Haunt Experiment. Guess who's back? Back, back, back again. Shady's back. We're officially one year into Nights of Horror. We had a successful year one going into our, uh, like, a, we, we finished our first official year. Now we were going on year two. But, you know. I, I titled the first one year zero because that was 2017 and that was literally when we started the channel and then we do a full year and now we're back at Horror Nights in 2018 for official year one. So we're officially one year in. We launched the Mindless Horror Podcast now. All right. We are recording this in an undisclosed location in our dumpy little studio. In the outskirts of Los Angeles, my name is Anthony. Uh, I'm George, and this is the Mindless Horror Podcast, Episode One. Now that it was something that originally was made for interviewing um, and delivering the best and uh, the best horror news that I thought interest me. Uh, the interviewing was going to be not scare actors. You will find out later in 2019 of, of how that started. But originally I wanted to interview like filmmakers and, and stuff, but I knew I was too small to do any of that. So anybody I got, um, I got. And, you know, other YouTubers that I that I really liked that were huge influences on me starting Nights of Horror. So I uh, had a great year with the podcast and I had a great year, um, you know, just doing more updates. Halloween Horror Nights, uh, as of this recording, just announced um, the Stranger Things maze. Now I'm going to give you my thoughts and read some tweets that John Murray put out this morning following that announcement. So without further ado, let's just get started. Um, uh, you know, we were covering every HHN announcement that was coming out. That was also the year that I broke my ankle. Uh, and then I uh, broke a bone in my ankle. Thank God it wasn't the bone that kept all my weight on uh, from what they told me at the ER. And I remember for a while, I mean, I had a lot of podcasts lined up with some pretty big channels at the time that were influences on me, like um, Awkward Arsic back in the day. What's up, man? Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Um, you know, I, I started seeing some of your videos a while back, and I enjoy your content, so I'm glad to be on, man. Oh, man, thank you very much. That means a lot. We you know, when he was doing stuff, we did a podcast together. That was a lot of fun. And TLEV was a lot of fun. Um, and to see this kind of whole new interview style was really, really fun. And, and to do something different with that podcast was a lot of fun. Um, and then we went on to do, uh, you know, we we broke our ankle, but they were still releasing uh, Halloween Horror Nights updates. So we were uh, filming some Halloween Horror Nights updates uh, as far as announcements. And this was another pretty good year honestly like you know this one wasn't a too bad of a year like it was a good follow-up from from 16 to 17 now to 18 uh which were three good years back to back to back and i really enjoyed it honestly this was a lot of fun but uh, we were really grinding with nights of horror and then in the summer of 2018 we finally got back to 100 percent just in time for haunt season uh, i do also remember us going to midsummer scream for the very first time in 2018 and that was a lot of fun. We attended Scare LA um, and, and whatnot and, and just enjoyed the event. It was, it was just a lot of fun, uh, good times and stuff. And um, it led us all back here. We didn't only hit Halloween Horror Nights that year, though. We also made our return to the fog. Not Scary Farm. We actually got invited from friends of mine from high school that were, said they were going. Um, I actually was at a show that night, uh, a tribute show, and I told Logan this. He was for Made in USA, uh, and midway through uh, you know, the, the entire show, I get a, a text saying, like, hey, come out. We're going to go to Knott's. I'd be like, oh, say less. So then I buy a ticket right at the show, and I drive over to Knott's. <laughs> went back to scary farm so that was a lot of fun but we'll talk about halloween horror nights and then get into that scary farm interaction that we had returning to the event and all that let's talk about halloween horror nights 2018 
a great lineup of mazes. Uh, we had our first Netflix property come. We had a cult classic that came to the event, which is a Halloween icon movie. We did some purging, The Walking Dead. We had a we had to fight some uh, some poltergeists. The shape made his return. The whores of Blumhouse made a return. Most importantly, this is the year that started easily the biggest and best original slash IP mazes that Universal Studios Hollywood have ever created, which was Universal Monsters Music by Slash. So let's start with Stranger Things. Soundstage 29 was home to Stranger Things in 2018, and it was a lot of fun to go through. The first season, uh, you got to walk through the entire first season from uh, meeting the kids all the way to going to Hawkins Laboratory, all the way going back into Hawkins' other houses, seeing some of the most iconic scenes from season one, which includes Joyce trying to find Will with the lights in her room and the and the letters painted on the wall. Um, and then you had, of course, uh, the introduction to Eleven, uh, and Eleven strapping down a Demogorgon to the classroom wall, which was really cool. Um, and just overall a fun time. I mean, Stranger Things, it really got immersed into that world, and I really enjoyed that first maze. It was a lot of fun. Right over to the Mummy Q, we had the cult classic written by, is it Michael Doherty? I think it is. Mike Doherty. Trick or Treat. The iconic horror anthology cult classic featuring Sam himself, and it was just like walking through the film. You opened up to the lady who is pretty much a scarecrow with a lollipop in her mouth. That was really cool. And then we go on to our first story, which is the principal. That was a lot of fun. He had the, the kid puking and whatnot. So that was really cool. And then we go on to our next story, which I believe was the werewolves, which was a lot of, um, a lot of fun to see the werewolves come up and stuff and see that iconic scene and whatnot. And then we go to the uh, the bus crash story, which was another creepy one. And to see that come to life in that big of a scale of how they built that was so phenomenally put together. And then we end it all with Sam facing off with the old bus driver himself, finishing off with your final scare of all the kids coming back to get revenge. I remember just absolutely loving this maze. Um, such a great film. That is a legit Halloween film right there. And that's a Halloween love letter. And to see that at a maze at Halloween Horror Nights, so good. The first Purge made its, uh, well, the Purge in general made its return to Halloween Horror Nights with the first Purge. Now, that was taking place, uh, that's the, it is what it says in the title, the first Purge. Uh, it took place in Staten Island. But there was a lot of uh, creepy scenes that they brought to life. Of course, the mannequin scene was one of them. Uh, seeing the girls swing back and forth, that was one of them. Um, to see the laser eyes and they actually pulled it off that was really cool to see that was really cool and then to see of course like um, when they invade the apartment complex you know that was just an intense scene as it is and they actually had the effect where the guy slipped throat and the water would come at you simulating blood that was a lot of fun um, but you know honestly like thinking back on it like a lot of people really talked down on it but there was a lot of great scenes that they brought to life with that maze and I know I think it was a last minute maze but you know Nonetheless, still a fun one. I had a great time. Uh, of course, the Walking Dead attraction made its uh, return, and I believe we went through it, but I've we've talked about that so many times in, in previous episodes, so we know how that went. Uh, let's go on to Poltergeist, which was in the uh, 747 area out in the Metro sets. Um, that was a lot of fun. I mean, I've seen the house in person, so that was cool to see the that they really built like a scale facade for this maze that looked really identical to the real house. So that was really cool to see in the beginning. And then, of course, it opens up with the little girl on the TV, you know, talking to the ghost itself. And then we make our way through the guy peeling his face. You know, that was really cool. We go see the clowns, uh, the cl different clown scenes, the tree scene, um, and then the giant ghost at the end. But And, of course, going into the graveyard was really cool uh, under the swimming pool. So that was overall just a fun maze, and the effects were really good on it. And, and even though it had uh, a little bit of black walls, I think it worked really well with that maze. Um, and, and they did a phenomenal job with some set dressings that, that had, like, a lot of really uh, detailed uh, sets. So, I mean, I was really impressed with that one. Halloween 4, the return of Michael Myers. The first year we got it. Uh, we'll, talk a bit, we'll talk about it again in the 2021 uh, episode, but... This was the first year we got it, continuing that that kind of uh, tradition of doing all the Halloween films that John Murdy uh, one day hopes to accomplish. Um, 
so the Halloween four came back with Michael Myers. This one took place. The facade was the gas station. And, you know, you get introduced to Michael as he uh, comes out of the, the hospital from being like burned alive pretty much from Halloween two. Uh, and then from there you are introduced to the face off between Loomis and, and Michael Myers in the diner, which was really cool. And then as you go throughout the maze, you start seeing Michael Myers wreak havoc. Uh, one of the things that I remember the most in that maze is they redid the electrical, um, like, kind of area. Uh, so they had, like, actual, like, uh, like um, Tesla coils. And, and, well, not, like, the real Tesla coils, but, like, they kind of simulated that they were Tesla coils and stuff. Uh, and, and they had the cages and stuff and the guy getting fried and Michael popping out at you. So that was a lot of fun. But, you know, it was, it was really cool. And we're going to talk about the 2021 one a little bit uh, down the road because there was was some differences which was really cool and it really surprised me so that was cool uh the horse of blumhouse chapter two i will say this was probably not my favorite maze that year um they based it around uh truth or dare and unfriended um and immediately when that got announced i was kind of a little like iffy about it because like i don't know how they were going to pull off unfriended which if anyone knows that film it takes place over an entire zoom call and it had an original ending too which was really cool which Easily was the uh, intro to, to Blumhouse's logo before they just changed it recently to make it look more MCU. But it was really cool to go through that because John Murdy had said that when he read the script, he actually added a scene that was in the maze that never made the, the film. So to see that was really cool because it was kind of like an exclusive, like what didn't make it to the film kind of thing uh, to see it in person, especially at Halloween Horror Nights. And then it went on to, of course, uh, some other trick or treat stuff going into, unf uh, I'm not trying to trick or treat, truth or dare stuff going into, of course, uh, unfriended and they kind of pulled that off pretty well i mean they they try to recreate the scene like if you were actually in the room instead of seeing it through a computer um and you would see the demon throughout the the different deaths from uh, unfriended but if anyone's seen unfriended that's it's a trippy movie uh it really is and and it, it's probably a really e easily low budget film movie as well but it's very effective so uh, hats off to you and then the ending was the Blumhouse logo brought to life so they had like the spinning chair they had the girl that you see in the thing but they made it a little bit more evil and stuff so that was interesting but probably not my favorite maze that year I think my favorite maze this year was the maze I'm about to talk about which is our last maze we're going to talk about Universal Monsters Music by Slash so this was the first year we got Universal Monsters um, and I'm a Big fan of the monsters. The monsters are great. Uh, Frankenstein's monster is my all-time favorite. But this was something that was obviously an IP, but John Murdy's own original take on it. So for this first one, he really did a great job on it. I remember watching the Midsummer Scream panel, or I don't remember if it was Midsummer Scream or Scale LA, but they had a panel for, for Halloween Horror Nights. And I remember him saying that a lot of the inspiration for the graveyard scene was based around old uh, graveyards that have like tagging and stuff on them and like Paris and all that, especially like Jim Morrison's grave and whatnot. So to see that kind of opening outdoor facade that was actually in Parisian Courtyard, to go through that kind of graveyard and then go into the crypt and then you, you're confronted by Frankenstein holding the little girl while the wolfman uh, scares you. Such a brilliant uh, opening to the maze. And that's not even like the start of the maze. That was just kind of like your preview of what you're about to witness and watch. As you come out of the hallway, much like how they had for the Horse of Blumhouse when they had that in Persian Courtyard, you come out to the alleyway and you're confronted by a burning Frankenstein's castle. And, of course, around said castle is a bunch of uh, angry village people who um, want to kill the monster. So the first thing you do is you walk in is you walk into, like, a movie vault, which I thought was really cool. Um, and you start seeing some of, like, the, uh, you know, film reel of, like, the old classic monsters playing. But then it's a scare of Frankenstein actually coming out and scaring you. see movie posters everywhere, what, what monsters you're about to see. As you turn the corner, the only time I think we may ever see him at Halloween Horror Nights, and that was really brilliantly executed was the invisible man um and that was really cool to see how they did it with the black light effect and whatnot that was really cool him laughing and stuff and he's kind of looked like a playboy thought it was really cool and then we go into the phantom of the opera where we see the phantom himself playing the piano which i thought was really bitching had that like really awesome awesome like music to it and whatnot from there i believe we went to dracula uh, and we saw some Dracula, which was really cool. Um, and I do remember seeing the mummy and the wolfman. So that was really cool. And it all ended with Dr. Frankenstein 
working on the bride of Frankenstein, which that's the first time we were introduced to the bride in, in these mazes. And he's cutting her apart and whatnot, and Frankenstein's monster comes out and says, we, be we belong dead, flips the switch, and the whole factory is supposed to explode. Um, going out, you get a bunch of different scares from a bunch of different monsters, leading out into a scare zone, which was called Monsters Masquerade, and it was basically the monsters kind of dressed up for a masquerade, wearing each other's like different faces and stuff. Did I mention Slash did the entire score for this maze and scare zone? Yeah, uh, that's what made the maze even better. As you went through each monster, they had their own theming and whatnot, and the score sounded phenomenal. I absolutely love this maze. This set the tone and the bar for what was to come with the Universal Monsters franchise and what is still to come at Halloween Horror Nights 2022 and hopefully more in the future. Because John Murray did say he has some plans with Slash for more ideas and, and, and mazes to collaborate on. And Slash said he'll always make the time to do said mazes at Midsummer Scream. So, I'm excited to see what's coming in 2022. But this one is what set the stage for me to know that I absolutely was in good hands with these mazes. Let's talk about the Terror Tram. Hollywood Harry finally made his return and they gave him a voice. And that was called Dread Time Stories. So Hollywood Harry takes over the Universal Backlot once again to terrorize it. Only this time he's taking hostages and he's taking tour guides. So if you can make it through his little circus obstacle with his friends there, uh, you can get out alive and, and, and walk away. Uh, it was really cool. They really rethemed each area to like a specific theming and stuff. Like Base Motel had its own theme. And of course, you walk up to the plane crash set and that had its own theme. And then, you know, they always build that little extra scene to kind of finish off the Terror Tram, which it had its own theming and stuff. So it was a lot of fun. Um, and Hollywood Harry coming back and kind of giving him a voice, that was something new. And they kind of made him more uh, of an icon in a way. And that's when we thought maybe we're going to start getting icons at Halloween Horror Nights in Hollywood because Orlando is famous for them, but Hollywood doesn't really have any. And we were hoping, and we still are hoping, that Hollywood Harry becomes an icon like our Jack the Clown. Scare Zones, we had Holidays in Hell, and this one was a good one because you was so fan-favorited at the event. They actually turned it into a maze in 2019, which we will talk about in the next episode. But this was a good... Uh, scare zone it was almost like a little maze it was in the metro lot right there and so it was kind of like a little maze to go through and you got to see the different holidays kind of be twisted and whatnot and they would take it a step further in 2019 with the maze so yeah that was fun trick-or-treat was on new york street so the stuff you didn't get to see too much in the maze like transformations and whatnot you got to see in the scare zone so that's what made the scare zone very unique uh, and they had a lot of the iconic uh characters from the film walking around um, the scare zone, which was really cool. And it had a really cool opening ceremony as well. Uh, you had Sam like sitting in the middle and then like all the monsters coming out, uh, with the, of course the stalker vampire who turns out to be the principal and stuff. And, and it's revealed that the girl's a werewolf and stuff. So that was really cool. They kind of recreated like an entire scene there. Uh, of course, monster masquerade. We did talk about at the end of universal monsters. Hell's harvest was the front gate. Um, I think that was a decent one. I think that's usually where our chainsaw guys are. So that was pretty cool. Um, it's always good to see the, uh, the, the chainsaw chase out at the end of every night that they do. That's, that's really fun. And then of course, toxic sick tunnel. Cause it had two X's returned to the Metro lower lot. That was your scare zone to go in the back of the Metro sets. But the fun doesn't stop there because we ended up returning to not scary farm in 2018 and that was a good time. We went through a lot. Uh, I, I remember that year, I think they had just brought back uh, Forsaken Lake. And I wanted to see it bad. That was one thing I wanted to see, the scare zone. So uh, we, I made it my mission to go see Forsaken Lake. We got through a couple of mazes prior to that, but um, we finally got to go see it. It was one of the last things we did. I don't think we went through everything, but we did do a lot of Not Scary Farm. So let's take a look at this lineup and see what we did do and what we didn't do. I mean, there was a lot of fun things in 2018. And um, I want to make sure we just get them all factually correct, man. Trick or treat lights out. I actually got to do trick or treat lights out. Now thinking back on it. Uh, and I remember this one being really creepy in the dark. 
I uh, definitely loved Trick or Treat as a maze, and to see it as a lights out treatment was really, really freaking scary. Um, and that was a lot of fun to go through and, and to see that. And I really uh, did enjoy the the dark experience because it did make it a lot scarier. I mean, if you're afraid of the dark, this maze is probably not for you. But Trick or Treat, that was, I think, the farewell year for that. And, and I'm glad I got to see it with the lights out treatment on the farewell years. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, the Depths did debut this year, and uh, it was a fun one. It, 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 was, it was really cool to see how it all began and to see how much has progressed since then. Um, but I remember just being blown away by that because I would always watch a lot of the, of course, um, you know, not the PO, uh, the POVs, yes, but I'd watch a lot of like monster and underwater movies and stuff. So that, to see this kind of come to life was really cool. I've always called it like a Pirates of the Caribbean um, dark twist, really, because you have like Davy Jones and all these exotic like creatures from underwater, which was really, really fascinating. And I really enjoyed it. Uh, effects were on point, and it's one of our favorites. Paranormal Inc. I got to go through again. That's another fan favorite, and and I really enjoyed that. I mean, that was it was good to go through that finally after seeing it on YouTube for so many years, and to finally go through it was so dope. Because um, you got to remember, I I didn't I was at Knotts in in twenty twelve, and then I didn't go back until twenty eighteen. So this is what really caught my love, and was like, hey, I want to go to Knotts again next year for twenty nineteen and cover it for the channel because I didn't get to cover anything from the channel. I did make a video afterwards kind of explaining how my night went and stuff but that was really cool but paranormal big time uh fan of and this was the first year that they kind of introduced like a new ending to it so that was really cool so i really did enjoy that kind of gave me some shine vibes if you kind of think about it obviously going in from one thing to the other uh dark entities we all know how i feel about that we just actually released our knots video yesterday and we talked about how it gives me the heebie-jeebies but it was a lot of fun to go through nonetheless uh, to see that alien vibe for the first time ever and to kind of get that alien vibe like from all the alien movies I've ever seen. That was a lot of fun and I really did enjoy it um, to walk through and see kind of like chaos go more and more after it um, after it freaking finishes. You know, it finishes with, of course, the last alien being already out and free and you have to get past him to, to survive. A lot of fun. Special Ops Infected. A lot of fun. Always had a lot of fun playing Special Ops, especially on its final year in 2019. A lot of fun. But I remember going through this one in 2018. Again, another maze that I've seen so much on YouTube, and I finally got to go through it, and I had a blast going through it, this, which is why I'm so excited for Bloodline this year. Um, but going through this and, and kind of bringing my, my zombie dreams to life, uh, especially playing Call of Duty as a kid, um, I, I just was in love with that. And, and to, to kind of be that call of duty player in real life that was so much fun take what i knew from zombie movies take what i knew from zombie video games and just apply it to what uh i know in in real life and just kind of scale it down a little bit because we're not actually shooting uh real zombies but to give it that illusion so much fun 10 out of 10 miss it already but bloodline is coming back with guns that should be a lot of fun the red barn this was the final year of Red Barn, and that was definitely one to remember. Gave me a lot of Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes going through it. Uh, and so kind of going through this and looking back at it, I, you know, there was a lot of good moments and good scares in there. That was the last time I actually remember there being a chainsaw at the event, um, whether it was an electric one or, or a real one. I mean, regardless, that was the last time I seen a, a chainsaw at, at Not Scary Farm um, at the end part. But it kind of had that like Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibe where it was kind of like a cannibal kind of thing and they were trying to kill you to, to pretty much eat you and use your skin and shit. Uh, so yeah, I could tell there was a lot of inspiration from Texas Chainsaw Massacre here. Um, and, and it was just kind of like that slaughterhouse and it had that like nasty ass stench. That was, um, that was easily, uh, easily one to remember. The cookbook was something that I was introduced to for the very first time in 2018. Um, and I know he had his hand in on with a lot of these mazes, but this is one that I still think is a beauty, and that is Dark Ride. Dark Ride was a lot of fun. That was the first year I got to be introduced to the cookbook and, and kind of see what this is all about. And I still love Dark Ride to this day. I think it's an amazing concept to have, like, this abandoned carny ride and whatnot, and I think it's, it's easily one of my favorite mazes. Um, at not scary farm and to go through it for the first time after seeing that one like all these mazes I had seen on YouTube So like I kind of was expecting what to see 
and whatnot. But to see it in person, finally, it, it was so, so amazing. And, um, I, I really enjoyed them. Uh, I, I did. And, and to, to kind of finally live them and kind of come back after so many years and see what, what's been going on. You know, it was just a great time going through it. Which leaves me with Shadowlands and Pumpkin Eater. Shadowlands, don't remember too much of. I remember more of 2019, but Shadowlands is always a fun time. Uh, you know, got the whole ninja-themed, like, Japan curse thing going on, which I loved. So that was really cool. And uh, I do miss it. Last year, 2019 was its last year, so... Yeah, and then Pumpkin Eater. This was when I was first introduced to the Pumpkin Eater because before that, when I went in 2012, it was something completely different, which I don't remember. But Pumpkin Eater was definitely something to remember. Uh, Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater, uh, and it's still relatively the same. They had changed a little bit in 2019 uh, and made it kind of more uh, walkable through because there actually used to be a portion where you actually can go through a real hay maze and they would scare the hell out of you in that one. So they kind of took that away and... Um, you know, have changed it since. But when that portion was there, that was really cool. Um, it kind of made you lost for a little bit, but then you eventually found your way out. So that was that was pretty cool. So, and of course, to see the scare zones, you had Ghost Town, The Return of Forsaken Lake, um, Carnival, and uh, The Hollow. A lot of fun to go through those. And they're even more fun for me now because I know a lot of the, the people who work them. So it just makes the experience so much better for me. But... That was a good year for Knights of Horror. We got to go to two haunts. We started covering more haunts. And, you know, it really, you know, it really was a haunt experiment because I wanted to see what it would be like to cover more haunts and, and whatnot. And I had a lot of fun doing it. So going into 2019, the haunt experiment was a success. So we had to up our game, go more places, check out more. And 2019 was the year that uh, I had a friend join me call him a brother but he finally joined up in the channel after being a longtime fan of the channel he finally joined up in the channel and nights of horror probably wouldn't be the same without him but that's a story for another time until then i will see you guys next week for chapter 10 of nights of horror origins see you guys in the fog